In this video, you will learn arithmetic operators in JavaScript and how to use them. Basic arithmetic operators. As you can see on screen, we have addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. So very straightforward. And you use these operators just as you would use them with numbers. Since this is very basic, I won't show you any examples because the examples are for the bit more advanced arithmetic operators. Advanced arithmetic operators. Let's start this advanced section with the remainder operator. And I'm going to demonstrate all of these operators in the browser. So just head into your browser. In my case, I'm using Chrome, right clicked, click, there you go, inspect, console, here we can write JavaScript. So let's try this out. Eight, remainder two, enter, gives me back zero. So the remainder operator is the percentage operator. Okay, I have to uh, click on enter, there you go. Um, how about something like this? 13, remainder two, gives me back one. So what remainder does is the following. It takes whatever number is in front of the operator. So in the first case, it was eight. In the second case, it was 13. And then it looks how often can I put number or put two. So at the end of the operator into that um, number and what is the remainder value. So obviously two fits four times into eight. And then what What's the remainder? Zero, because it's an even number. Hmm? I already gave it away. You can use remainder to check if a number is even. And so with 13, one is a remainder because it's not an even number. So in a code, what you could do is something like this. Let's say we have a constant of number and we're going to assign the value of four to it. And then we're going to have an if conditional. We say if number remainder two strictly equals zero. And then we have to open up our curly bracket console.lock. We're going to say number is even. So we're just locking this string out to the console like so. There you go. And it does lock out our string numbers even because it's checking is whatever is stored in the value of number. When I apply remainder two to it, will it give me back zero? Yes, it will. So this is in JavaScript, in my opinion, the way to check if whatever number you have is even or odd. Next up is unary negation. And what it does is it takes positive numbers and turns it into negative, but the other way around, it does the exact same thing. I'm going to show you both. So let's start out with our constant score. And this contains the value of five. There you go. And now we're going to say const new score equals minus score. So this minus that is the arithmetic operator. That is our unary negation. It has to be written before our variable or just before our value. If we click on enter and now we check what's in new score minus five. Okay. I said the opposite is true too. If you have a negative number, it will turn it into a positive number. So let's say in this case, uh, I don't know, uh, score two, let's call it like so. And it's going to be minus eight. And now we're going to say const new score two. And again, minus and now score two. And if we check what's the content of our new score two, it will be now a positive eight. The unary plus is usually used to take a string and convert it to a number. Let's have a look at that. By the way, in case your browser is getting too cluttered, just click on that symbol there and you're good to go again. So let's have our constant of grade and we're not going to store a number in it because let's say we somehow got this wrong and we stored a string in it. Okay. Now we can use the unary plus to turn this into a number. We're going to do so like this and 
the operator is written before we now mention our variable. Enter, and if we have a look at new grade, there you go, now we can see it's a number. So if we have a comparison with grade, we see that's a string with the new grade because we use the unary um, plus is now actually a number. But what happens if you were to, to apply this to a string which has nothing to do with a number? Because what we see here, what happened with grade is it was able to convert that string one into a number one. But what if we have, for instance, an actual name of a person, let's say Jane, and we try to use the same principle, the same operator, new name, equals, we're going to do the exact same thing, plus name, and see what the outcome is. So new name, let's check, N-A-N, not a number. Okay, so it tried to convert, convert the string Jane into a number, but obviously that is not possible, so it gives us back not a number. But you do see that if you, in your script, in your flow somewhere, maybe the user input, uh, you're not sure, is it a number, or is it a number, but as a string, then you can use the unary plus to force it to become a number. Increment is an assignment and an addition operator all in one. Now, it depends on where you used your, this operator, either before or after the value or the variable. Sounds a bit complicated. How about I write this out, fast forward it, and then we can have a look at it together. So, the post increment, which we're using here for our constant update, we're saying whatever is stored in the variable of numero plus plus, so that is post increment. Now, if we look what happens, numero was incremented by one, so contains the value of four, but update contains the value of three, because it gives us back the return value of numero before the increment was made. And the difference with the pre-increment, which we see here, plus plus ABC, which is then stored in XYZ, is that if we have a look, our ABC, which originally contained three, again, was incremented by one, but this time XYZ, the return value, is what happened after the increment. So it gives us back the value of four versus three in update. So you see the difference? So decrement, I already went ahead and wrote it out for us. Again, we have our post and our pre. So if we use the post decrement like so, ABC, if we check ABC contained the value of four, if we use the post decrement on it, ABC will contain three, so just subtract it one. And the sub, so this is the const sub, will be four because it's giving us back the return value of before the decrement was executed. Now with the pre-decrement, so written minus minus and then the variable or the value, we see that ABC now contains two, so it did subtract one because if you remember, ABC contained three before. And now the sub before is going to be two because it gives us back the return value after the subtraction was made. Leave us a like if you've learned something new in this video and please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming JavaScript and technology videos. And I do have a question for you. Are there any specific JavaScript topics that you would like me to cover? Please let me know in the comment section below.